I have made it to Beppu. I am about to go down and check out the seaside. Uh, it's not a very nice day here. It's a little sprinkly, a little rainy. But, you know, that's why we bring rain jackets. That's why we pack our rain gear. I'm going to go check out the seaside. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how far we'll be able to see. Or if I'll be able to cross this giant road. But we're going to walk around for a minute and check it out before I go and check into my hotel. Hotel check-in isn't until 2 p.m. And it is now currently 1240, so I've got some time. Uh, let's walk towards this giant Asahi tower. It says Asahi Biru in Katakana. Sorry about all the street noise. It's a busy street down here on the seaside. But we're going to try to make it over to the beach. It looks like it's all built up marina-wise. I don't know if we'll be able to make it. But I figured we'd walk around and check it out. Beppu is a, a smaller resort town. Uh, there's not a lot going on uh, outside of the onsen and the few casinos that are here. But uh, this, this place comes highly recommended. Uh, my, one of my Japanese senseis, one of my Japanese language senseis uh, suggested that this, this, this was a, a must-see spot if we were on onsen tour, which so far we have not been on onsen tour. But now that we're here, this is where onsen tour begins. This big highway is kind of depressing. We're going to take an underpass here. This is something that's common in Japan. Says so the Lake Lower Roadway. All right. Down into the depths we go. All this to cross the street. But you know what they say, better safe than sorry. Ooh, can we go that way? Should we go that way? Or why don't we go this way? A nice mural on the wall of Sakana, and angels, Pegasus. Ooh, and a witch. <laughs> There's an Oni. Onsen towns have a real, uh, they have a real relationship with Oni. Back in the day, they used to call them hells. Here we see a mural depicting the steam coming out of all the different steam vents in town. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get to check out couple of onsen. I don't think I'm going to be able to film in the onsen, so you're not going to get to see me all wet. Up we go. There is the Asahi Tower. Okay, let's go this way. Yeah, that looks kind of like a dead end. It's kind of one of the things about being an explorer. Sometimes you hit dead ends and have to turn around. I want to thank everybody who's been watching my videos. If you could uh, click the thumbs up button or leave a comment and let me know what you like or what you didn't like. 
things that you'd like to see more of or like things that you'd like to see less of things that you would like to hear less of do i talk too much do i not tell you enough it'd be great to get some feedback i'm talking to you like we're together but i'm pretty much out here on my own not the best day out here in Beth Peak. It's a little rainy. But hey, when you only got one day, you do what you got to do, right? Mmm, since 2003. Looks delicious. Trying to find a cut over to our right in order to get to the shore, but it seems like all the hotels that line the shore are blocking access. So we're gonna walk a little ways. I hope you don't mind. If you do mind, you can fast forward the video until we get to the part where we're at something interesting. But I'm at real time. I can't really fast forward this for you. See these yellow lines in the street? These yellow lines have grooves, and then at the intersection, they have dots. And when you put your foot on them, you can really feel them. You can hear the beep boo. Beep boo. All of this is set up for blind civilians. They can walk on this grooved track, and they know that there's nothing in front of them. They're not going to step off into the street. And then when they get to the corner, it changes from a groove to more of a braille dot kind of system. And they can tell that they need to stop and wait for the beep. We need to stop and wait for the light. Oh, it's raining. I hope the, hope the Osmo likes getting wet. Uh, I'm going to get off this busy highway. The noise is kind of... Not doing me well. I might have to uh, cut this a little short because I am getting water all over the equipment. And Osmo is already mad at me for abusing him at Miyajima Island. We're running his battery completely dead until he couldn't hold his camera straight. But we're here. We're here in the onsen town of Beppu. If you were to look at it on Google Maps, it's on the, on the top edge of Kishu, the bottom island. Oh, it's a lot quieter back here. I need an umbrella for Osmo. It looks like I'm coming up on an area that we might be able to see the water. Can you see the steam coming out of the see the steam coming out of the vent here? I don't know if you can see it. That's natural hot springs. Not like New York City. <laughs> the steam from New York City is not coming from a natural hot spring, I can tell you that. All right. This doesn't look too promising, but at least we get a good advantage. the shore. We made it to the beach, you guys. I 
There looks to be a park over here. And maybe we can get some shelter. Shelter from the storm. This is just a quick uh, pre-lunch walk around while I'm waiting to check into my hotel. And as soon as that's done, I am going to go take a dip in my Ryokan Onsen. Ryokan, for, for those of you who might not be familiar, a Ryokan is a traditional Japanese inn. Kind of a nostalgic tourist place, but back in the day, that was, uh, that was the Holiday Inn of the 1860s, where the Ryokan, small, family-owned. Um, and here in the Onsen town, each one of them has their own bathhouse. So when we go back to the Ryokan, I will check in and take a dip, see what the waters here are like. Kintaro Saito-san made a joke and said, oh, you must want to get radiated. And I said, I'm not going to Fukushima. He said, no, but any onsen will radiate you because the water comes from deep beneath the ground. Kintaro is also kind of a kidder. I don't know how truthful that is, but, you know, you only live once. And if you do it the right way, once is all you need. So, once again, not, not, not the best weather. Nobody's out there laying out in the non-existent sun. No bathers. But we're on the coast. I don't know if you can see that far distant horizon. The far distant horizon is Shikoku. Shikoku is the island we'll be visiting next. And we'll be taking a ferry tomorrow morning from here over to Shikoku. So that should be interesting. I don't know if you can see over there. You see those ghostly silhouettes of, it looks like giant buildings way out there. Or industrial, that might be where the coast wraps its way around. Sorry. The coast wraps its way around and it looks like some sort of industry down there on that end of the peninsula. Anyhow, I just wanted to give you guys a, a short, a short, uh, Introduction to Bapu. Um, I'm not liking, not liking the way the water is accumulating on my equipment, so I might cut this short. But tonight we'll walk around some more. Uh, apparently there's a, a lively nightlife here. And apparently there's a red light district. So, you know, maybe we'll go check out the red light district. This little guy seems to be facing the wrong way. Oh, look, shelter. Maybe we can go up there and get out of the rain for a minute. Dry off. The reason I wanted to come to an onsen town is onsens have a long, long history in Japan. Uh, it's, it's part of the culture that goes way, way back. And people used to travel long distances for the healing power of, of certain specific onsen. Uh, onsen is a term that can be used for the hot springs, the tub, but it's also a term that they use for the entire town. So this is Beppu Onsen, kind of like if you were to say, um, I don't know, so-and-so village or so-and-so town, Onsen is also used in that manner. So when you say Beppu Onsen, you mean the entire town, or you can also say, I'm gonna go sit in Onsen, meaning you're gonna go sit in the hot springs. <laughs> 